everybody, it's Susan Lynn, your psychic medium. Um, this day, this video, we are going to be talking about one of the most, um, the most crazy, um, amazing, um, memorable is the word I'm looking for, memorable experiences that I've had uh, crossing over a ghost. Um, so this particular story takes place in Savannah, Georgia, which is amazing. If you haven't been, go. Um, the city has these squares and that's kind of what it's famous for. But I was staying in an old hotel with a friend of mine um, on one of the squares. And it's a really an old hotel. And when we got up to the top floor where we were staying, um, we went to our room um, and um, it's funny, I, I knew something was there and somebody was there. I mean, obviously this is Savannah, a very haunted city um, and a ho old hotel, very haunted, hello, uh, makes perfect sense, right? Um, and, and if you know me, if you watched any of my videos, you'll know that I block ghosts because they always want something. They want you to help them, they want you to, uh, take them to the hospital. They don't think they're dead. Um, they they think that they're hurt or they need help um, or they're upset about something. I mean, obviously, if you're dead and you haven't crossed over, you're probably upset. Let's think about it. So anyway, I usually block. And so for whatever reason, um, I didn't, I, I either A, I wasn't blocked enough or I was more relaxed or whatever, but the friend that I was with also has abilities, but she doesn't think she does. So um, we looked at each other and we were like, huh, and, and you know, wonder what that is, you know, but we didn't really want to spend the next hour talking to ghosts. We really wanted to go have dinner. So we were like, yeah, let's just kind of put that over to the side and maybe we'll deal with it later. So we left. Upon returning that evening, um, as I'm in the hallway, and it's funny because you think of old hotels and you think of like narrow hallways, right? But this had a really wide hallway, like maybe eight foot or 10 foot wide, um, very like a runway. And so anyway, in this hallway, here comes this woman and she is dressed to the nines and she looks marvelous. She looks like a model, um, statuesque, long legs, um, slit skirt. You can see her long legs and her heels, uh, except for that this wasn't a real woman. This was a ghost woman. And as she walks, literally sashayed, I was going to say walk, but guess what? She was sashay sashayed by me uh, and my friend. Um, <laughs> I said, did you happen to catch that? It just went by and she said well I kind of got something but I wasn't sure what it was and I said well it's a woman and she is dressed like she is going out on the town and um you know I just let her keep going my room was to the right and she was walking past me to the left at the end of the hall there was another door so I assumed she was going that way um anyway went into the hotel room uh, getting ready for bed and that's when she came in the room and just started talking. And I mean, like, oh my God. So she starts telling me about, I mean, the thing is, you have to understand, this woman's presence was like Marilyn Monroe, right? I mean, you're not just going to, this wasn't like, you know, any old Betty or, you know, Harriet or, you know, whatever coming to talk to you. This was like someone who commanded your attention when you came in when she came into a room you knew she was in the room you you knew um so she walks into the room and she starts doing this and telling me things and basically she's saying this place has gone to hell in a handbasket it's just gone to shit <laughs> and it used to be so much more grand and 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 then you know i i was just listening to her i was paying attention and i was listening so i wasn't blocking her right and and as i said before once a ghost knows that you can hear them and knows that you um can talk back to them they want to talk to you because they haven't talked to anybody in a long time like maybe 50 years or 100 years who knows right so once she knew that you know we were communicating 
Then she really sat down like, like a friend that sits down at your table and is like, I've got to tell you about my day, you know? And so that's what happened. So she starts to tell me about how this whole upper floor was hers. This was one big suite. Um, the, the hallway was the same, but all the rooms that went connected all the way down and ended in this room at the very end of the hallway that I had seen, that was all hers. And she said that at the end of the hallway, uh, where those doors were, there was a, a, a like a 180 degree view. So there was windows that she said that she could see the whole square. That that's the thing. That's the important thing, right? So, um, and and you know, all this was hers. This was all her. Her the whole floor was hers, and she was a kept woman. Um, she uh, became a kept woman very early in her life, very young. Um, and she was kept by the banker of the town of, of Savannah. Uh, this particular banker was the biggest banker, uh, the most well-known banker. And, and of course he was married, um, but you know, he kept this, this woman, Lorna, on the side. Okay, she was fine with that because, you know, she got to live the life. I mean, she came from abject poverty to being able to wear furs and have all the finest things, right? But what ended up happening was the local ladies in the town uh, found out, obviously, I mean, it was pretty obvious that she was kept by somebody. And so they started treating her really badly uh, when she was out on the town. And you have to understand too, she's showing me she's wearing mink. And that's just not, Savannah's not the kind of town where people would wear furs all day, every day, if the weather got below 50, you know what I mean? I mean, if you had a fur, you would only wear it at very special occasions, right? But she wore it all the time and she wore jewelry and had her hair. I mean, literally she was a movie star, right? Um, so my point is that she really stood out. When she would walk amongst the town people, she would stand out. Um, and that was a bad thing. The women didn't like her. They knew she was somebody, one of their husbands, uh, kept woman. And, um, therefore they, they didn't want her around and they made it very clear to her to the degree that she got to the point where she didn't go out. She literally never left her floor. She would have these uh, young boys come up and deliver groceries to her or cigarettes or a magazine. Whatever she wanted, they would, it would just come from the outside because she didn't leave. So anyway, this is the thing. So she's involved with this banker guy. And now the thing that happens is that makes it really interesting and it really could be a movie is that there's a man that she, before she became 100% taken with the banker, she had a few other fellas, let's just say. She had a few fellas that um, were supporting her. And so one of these fellas was um, a man that was closer in her age um, and was the, um, son of a very wealthy family and but but he you know obviously he went off to uh, college to school to college and became a businessman of his own right and then ended up being gone for about 10 or 15 years and then moving back to savannah um and at which point he sought her out so um he finds her you know he, she's still in the same hotel but it's a different story now because she's completely supposed to be 100% with the banker. Um, but what happens? He's gorgeous. This man is gorgeous, like Rock Hudson kind of look to him, uh, very handsome. Um, he shows up, knock, 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 and of course they start having an affair um, to the degree that when the banker was out of town, he would be so bold as to kind of spirit her, um, and, and what that means is like he would uh, disguise her and they would leave Savannah and go on car trips. Um, I mean, imagine not having left your flat or your, your whatever, even if it's a whole floor, imagine having never left that in um, years. And now all of a sudden Rock Hudson's gonna show up and you know take you on a trip. Well, yeah, you're gonna go. You ain't gonna say no to that. So anyway, here's the thing. 
She starts having an affair with him. Of course, he cannot marry her. He wants to marry her. They, they are truly actually in love, like the real love thing. It's happening. But he can't marry her because, you know, her status um, as a woman, as a, as a lady of the night or whatever you want to call her, um, she's not a marriageable. <laughs> she's not, she's not, she can't marry him. He can't marry her. So um, they don't get married. Um, and, but here's the thing that happens. She's telling me this whole thing. And then, you know, I go to bed because it, it's like this, you know, this takes some time to tell me this whole thing. The next day I get up and I'm thinking as I'm going to the elevator, I'm looking at those doors at the end of the hallway and I'm thinking, I wish I could see in those doors because if I could see what that is down there, I would know if she's telling me the truth or if I'm, you know, or I, I obviously, you know, am I like going cuckoo crazy or what? I just, you know, it'd be nice to have some validation and some proof, right? So um, the doors were closed, so I didn't think anything of it, but when I came back, back to the hotel later that afternoon the door at the end of the um hallway was ajar now i also have to tell you this she was complaining because she couldn't go to that room now she's a ghost i mean she can go anywhere i mean for once in in you know however many years she could go anywhere she wanted right on foot or whatever but she didn't like to go in that room because she said there was a desk in there and there was an accountant in there. And she just did not like accounting. She did not like businessmen. Um, you know, so she just thought that was, ru it ruined her view. I mean, she would go in that room and she could see the 180 degree view of this beautiful square and the mossy trees and it was beautiful. So um, when I saw the, the door was ajar, I went down to the end of the hallway and it wasn't open enough. It was just open like so that it wouldn't lock, you know, if somebody comes in and out, you know how sometimes you leave the door ajar. Um, but so I kind of like opened it a little bit and I was hoping beyond hope that it wasn't going to be like old and go creak, which would be bad. So I opened it and I could just barely see in there and guess what? There's a desk in there. And there's a beautiful wall of windows that look out over this the square. And there's a guy in there, like doing something on a computer on a laptop. And um, she was right. So I went downstairs and I I said, you know, um, I said I couldn't help but notice, but there's a office in in your hotel. And he goes, yeah, well the the hotel next to us burned down a few months ago and they're going to rebuild it, but they needed an office. And we had this suite and we decided to rent it to them for a year for them to have like as their office where they would uh, meet all the contractors and the insurance and all that stuff. I mean, so they would be, you know, right next to the site. And he said, it's unusual, but we decided to do it. So again, more, com more confirmation, right? So here's the best part of the whole video. We're at 13 minutes. You gotta hold on, hold on. Um, the best part of the whole video. So what do I do? I'm like, look, Lorna, this is not, you know, this is not exciting. Like trumpling up and down this hallway, even though you look like a million dollars, it's not exciting. Aren't you ready to cross over? You know, wouldn't you like to see your loved ones or, you know, I mean, obviously at this point, she didn't feel connected to her family, obviously, because she either didn't have a family or they gave her up. She was orphaned. She just didn't have a family. I and mean, this is how she ended up being the person she became. Right. And but she did, you know, say that, yeah, I'm 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 ready. I'm ready to move on because this is, you know, she just felt very stuck, you know, um, so when I, when I opened up the veil to see who could come and, and, and meet her and, and, and basically pick her up to go over there, guess who shows up? Guess, guess, guess. Are you guessing? Rock Hudson, the man, the love of her life, the love of her life. He turns out that he loved her too. And he came to get her. It was amazing. It was so romantic. So here he comes, Mr. Rock Hudson. Oh my God, so handsome. Comes through the veil and it's like, I don't know, I don't watch old movies. I haven't even watched Gone with the Wind. Do not hate me, do not hate me. But I'm just saying, 
this is what I envisioned it to look like is he's just just handsome man in this you know I think he's wearing a tux actually and he leans in because you know she's dressed to the nines I mean she's dressed like she's going to the Emmys or you know to the Oscars um so she, he leans in and puts his hand out can you see my hand puts his hand out and she grabs his hand and off they go in, into the, onto the other side. The best crossing over ever. The best. The most romantic, the most, I mean, to this day, I can see all the details just as if it, it's happening again. It's that clear. And my friend, I mentioned in the very beginning of the video about how could you catch in with this. Once I described her a little bit to her, she was able to like click into that energy and she saw the whole thing too. So we were sitting there together. We just needed popcorn. I'm telling you. We were sitting there together going, oh my God, he's coming back. It's Rock Hudson. He's coming back to get her. It was amazing. It was amazing. So we got to both see this whole thing happen and she got to go home with Rock Hudson I mean, I can tell you the banker was not handsome, not handsome, um, kind of like very rotund. Uh, but anyway, um, it was amazing. The best crossing over ever. So um, if you go to Savannah, check out all the beautiful squares and uh, don't bring any ghosts home. Uh, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I really think it's uh, amazing that spirits are among us and that that they they interact with us and we don't even know it most of us don't even know that it's happening um but i really think it's amazing to be able to help excuse me to be able to help them cross over you know and especially when you have somebody like rock hudson coming to help you um coming to meet you at the door that's pretty amazing right so anyway I do offer readings, psychic and mediumship readings. I can bring your loved cross your loved ones that have crossed over in for you too, even if they do or do not look like Rock Hudson or Marilyn Monroe. Um, and um, I'd be happy to help you with any of that. Hope you enjoyed the video. You guys all take care. Please like it if you like the video. If you did not like this video, you didn't see it, you don't know me, I don't know you, it's cool. Um, if you did like the video, subscribe. Maybe you want to see more videos like this. Um, and um, share it with your friends. Do you guys have a good one? And we will be in touch with you soon. Adios.